Robbie, it was a very exciting weekend last weekend, of course, with Skydiver beating the boys in the grade one Preakness. We want to know what was going through your head during the running of the race, and especially when you had to make that early move on the backside. Well, first, I had a, a couple of plans that if, if certain things went on full, a couple of audibles say this happened to happen, and uh, she broke extremely well like I thought she could have. And um, I figured if I could kind of squeeze a little bit, maybe hopefully um, our collector would kind of go faster. And I, I broke him very easy. I look over, Bob Average, two horses are right outside of me. But uh, I was always in, she was always in my hands. Kenny said, if we can go 12, 12, 12, 12, she will finish. And middle of the backside, everybody started kind of receding off of Authentic, the Derby champion. I saw an opportunity, I had to make a conscious decision that time. And uh, it worked out. It worked out well. And I got inside of her. I was able to take a hold, inside of her. I was able to take a hold of him, and that helped turn it for home when I took off and got away. How would you describe her as a horse? I know you've been able to spend some time with her. I saw you post something on Twitter recently. What is she like? She's so, so kind about everything. I actually galloped her all week, and uh, that helped me, helped me in the race, too, because there's still so much confidence in me getting on her. She got better and better every day, and Friday morning was just was superb, superb morning for her, and she even pulled cooling out, and she she knew where she was at Keeneland. She was she was aware, she was ready when she was. I was just a good passenger. I was really a good passenger for her, I think, and uh, I wasn't gonna even pull my stick out on her. That's how confident she was. She was, and I was. What do you think makes her so good? Well, I guess we could start with her ability, her size, her um, her heart. She's got a heart that's I mean crazy, and competitiveness. Like she don't want to lose. I mean, she don't know she's a filly, actually. I don't think she knows she's a filly. She looks at horses as horses. and She gets upset when she's not the first one out in the barn. And, uh, she's watching horses tacked up at a Pimlico that morning, and she wasn't the first one out. She didn't like that too much. So she's very, um, she's a leader. She's definitely a leader. If she, if she was in a sorority, she'd be the leader. <laughs> That's awesome. That's a great analogy. Um, congratulations. Thank you. I, I also wanted to ask you, just from the perspective of your career, Robbie, what, what motivates you even to this day? I feel it's like a uh, Swiss skydiver. No, actually, uh, I've been doing this 30 years and uh, 33,000 races, and I still love what I do. I don't think many people can say that. Um, it was kind of hard to evolve with the change and everything that goes on in horse racing, but uh, I learned to accept it and uh, just kind of work hard. and get you got a lot of young riders coming up, so I have to keep my physical uh, ability shape and... My, my head's in the, in the right place, and I don't forget, you don't forget how to ride. And that's why getting Saturday was so much fun because, like, me and Johnny come down the lane, we go back, me and Johnny go back a long ways, a lot of these stretch duels, and I, uh, I think we're even now. He rode a little filly called Rax Riches, and I was on curling, and I wasn't over until Saturday. Now I'm over. We're even now, so we're good. <laughs> so those races really motivate me the most than anything. I mean, everyday race, I love that. I love them. I love riding, but so, but uh, Saturday was great, and, and it, uh, me and Johnny, we're good now. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us here this afternoon. Once again, congratulations and good luck with everything moving forward, Robbie. Thank you for the time. Thank you. Thanks.